Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bold Series International Experience Edition. First of all, please let me introduce myself. My name is Teddy, as today's MC will guide you through this event. And ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I want to ask you, does anyone know what BOLD stands for? Or for those, for those of you who have already joined the session before, maybe from last week or maybe from the days before, you can give a virtual thumbs up. And for those of you who don't know yet, BOLD stands for Venus Online Discussion, where today we will be hearing direct presentation from experts. And for today, especially, is about business pitching. Today's World Series team is Mrs. Pitching and will be presented directly by engineer Sir Ian Charlie Nico Vitubin as the head of ITSO, Technology Business Incubation Office at Adamson University, Neo Science and Technology Incubation Center, and will be moderated by Ms. Marcella Eva Vina Wirawan, uh, which is the student, our student at Business Management Department, Business Online. Okay, so before uh, we start today's event, I would like to remind you all, if you have any questions related to our topic for today, you can ask directly through the chat column, or you may raise your hand during the Q&A session. And you can also update this activity by posting on your social media, and don't forget to tag or mention us at our Instagram, at Venus Online Learning. And also, at the end of the session, the committee will share the link for you to fill in order to receive today's Bold Series Certificate. Okay, and now I would like to read the detail of our regulation for today's webinar. Okay, thank you. First of all, all participants' microphones must be muted. And if you can, you can turn off, uh, uh, sorry, you can turn on your video during session if you don't have any obstacles. And participants must change their display name according to the screen. For being a student, you can change into student ID dash full name, like the example. And for business lecturer, into lecturer ID dash your full name. And for alumni and uh, from the public, you can change into alumni dash your full name and public dash your full name. Okay, and as I said before, during the Q&A session, you can type out your questions in the chat column, or you may raise your hand to ask permission to use your microphone. And also, this is the one that uh, you guys may be waiting for, the exit ticket link. Don't worry, the exit ticket link will be disclosed in the end of the session. And you must be here for the duration of minimum 80% or until the end, yeah, until the end is better. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Regan. I will also uh, want to provide a little information before we start today's session that uh, we are here at Minus. We have our own publishing, which is Minus Publishing Books, and we are currently having a 25% promotion at our Shopee and Tokopedia. And if you if you want to ask questions about Minus Publishing Books, you can email it at publishing at binus.edu or you can chat our Instagram at Minus Publishing. Okay, so without Further ado, I would like to invite our moderator today. So, hello, Miss Marcella. Hello, good afternoon, Miss uh, Teresia Diana. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You may start the session, Miss mm -hmm. Marcella. Thank you. Okay. May I start now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, good afternoon to all the audience. Today, we are going to start this webinar with the topic about business pitching. And let me introduce you to our speaker today. Mr. Ian Karniko Fituban. He is the head of ITSO. Pardon. He yeah, he is the head of ITSO or Technology Business Incubation Office from Adamson University. And like in this session, we are going to call him. He preferred to be called Mr. Nico instead of Ian. Okay, good. Good afternoon again, Mr. Nico. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks. And thank you for supporting our Bold Series discussion today. It is an honor to have you share your knowledge with all the students here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I think your your mute is your I microphone definitely. was muted. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So, Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to get a better insight of what Mr. Nico does, he is a dynamic leader at the forefront of innovation and entrepreneurship. He has a proven track record of years of experience in leadership roles, and including his current position as the head of the technology business incubation office at Adamson University. Yeah. <laughs> 
Neoscience and Technology Incubation Center, leading and guiding teams from ideation to commercialization. And his contributions have been instrumental for his institutions to garner numerous accolades and recognitions. And his leadership adds a driver in collaborations with industry leaders, securing government support for research initiatives, and engaging in impactful technology innovation and commercialization in the force. And Mr. Nicole's passion for empowering future innovators extends to his involvement as a certified ventures builder coach, where he mentors big and small companies with concept of blue oceans, design thinking, and innovation strategies to build new ventures, like fast logistic and AMCB enterprise, to name a few. And also uh, his multifaceted expertise and dedication to empowering the next generation of innovators position him as one of the front runners in the startup ecosystem. Having mentored and coached hundreds of innovators in the ecosystem, his unwavering commitment to driving positive change through technology and entrepreneurship continues to inspire and impact communities far and wide. So, with such amazing years of experience, I'm sure what Mr. Nico is going to share with us, the students here, will be something precious for us to learn. So to Mr. Nico, time and place is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marcella. That was uh, quite a lengthy introduction. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nico. You can call me Nico, for short, because I have three names anyway. Can I share my slide, please? There you go. So am I audible? Please type one in the chat box if you can hear me. One, one, one. Perfect. All right. OK. How about my screen? Do you see my screen now? It should be saying. Uh, business pitching, business university, both here. Raise your hand if you see my screen. Raise your hands. Perfect. All right. So before I proceed, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of my background or uh, a more human introduction, <laughs> so to speak. By the way, you can call me again, Nico, and I am the head of the technology business incubator at Adonist. But simply, we help students, innovators, and the community alike to develop technologies leading towards commercialization. So from the ideation stage where they just have an idea up to the stage where they fully commercialize their product, their technology, or innovation, we support them, we support their endeavors through uh, multiple facets of the business, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, life cycle, right? So we help them with networking, we help them with reaching clients, we help them with getting to where they want to be in terms of their business goals and KPIs. I am also serving as a venture builder coach for Evodin or even evidence-based output-driven investable enterprises where we recently just conducted a sprint for a big company for around 300 managers and up. And the end point of that was, it was it was quite an experience because by the end of that sprint, they, the, the 300 plus managers were able to create a new venture out of their mother company. And so for that, we also support other investors and angel investors and venture capitalists as a venture, venture scholar through Quest Ventures while serving as a chairperson for the Scale NCR Programs Committee. Anyway, like what Marcella has mentioned earlier. Yes? Right. Anyway, like what Marcella has mentioned earlier, uh, I, I, I've been training people or teams in the past in international, local, and different pitching competitions where we were able to win multiple awards from those competitions. And not just that, we also apply these pitching techniques on how to help their stakeholders, their investors, their customers take action towards the benefit of their business. Now, I want to ask you guys, who among you here 
has ever tried business pitching? Type pitch in the chat box if you had heard. Anyone? Anyone out of the 272 participants who have experience in business pitching? By the way, Ms. Marcella, are these all students? Are, are, are the audience comprised of all students? Some, uh, some are students, some are from alumni too. And then like, I think there are like some are public too, uh, sir. Okay, no worries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like nobody has experienced uh, pitching yet. So let's talk about that. What is pitching and why is it important? Why are we even talking about this, right? Pitching in business refers to presenting your business idea to another party. For example, you may pitch your startup business or your company to a potential investor or maybe your products to your potential customers, right? A business pitch needs to give your audience a clear understanding of what your plan and goals are and how you can get them to buy in. To do this, you must gather and share relevant information and provide a compelling vision. So what happens there is when you pitch, you must be able to get the audience see what you see. Does that make sense? Type MS in the chat box if that makes sense. Right, thank you. Thank you, MS, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now, the most important thing about the pitch is you get them to act, right? It's different when you're just presenting for the sake of presentation, but in pitching, the goal is to get them to act, to motivate and persuade your audience, whatever they are, to follow your idea and make it a reality, whether to buy your product as a customer, whether to invest in your company as an investor, whether to collaborate with you as a partner, or maybe just, just join you as an advocate and spread the word about, your, about what you're pitching about, right? And some of us don't really realize, remember I asked you earlier who among you have experienced pitching? I believe all of you did already. You just didn't realize it. For the students here, who among you asked for allowances from your parents? Please raise your hand. Raise your hand. Right, you asked for them, right? Who among you have asked for, let's say, money from your parents to do a special project? Raise your hand. Right, perfect. Now here's the thing. Did you know, or maybe you didn't even realize that what you did there, you were pitching. You were pitching to your parents that you need this certain amount of money because you'll have to do this project. And if you don't do these projects, this is what will happen to you. This is what will happen to your grades. I will not be able to do this. I will not be able to do that. Now, try, try to look into it. What you don't realize is that is already pitching. You're getting your parents to see a picture of what could happen if they don't give you the money. What will happen if they give you the money? And you're pitching for them to take action to give you the money so that you can achieve your goals. That, my friends, is pitching, right? So what is important with a great pitch? Create a good pitch or a, a very good pitch. Content is always good, right? The good content always does good for your pitch, right? Or for your messaging. But the thing is, good content is not everything. Because more than the content is your messaging. Your messaging. What is your messaging? Your messaging is your ability to communicate what you want to say. 
Do they add value to your customer or investor? Do they add value to your parents when you ask for your allowance? What value does it bring your parent? What value does it bring your investor? What value does it bring your customer? What value do they get? Focus on providing that value for your audience, especially your investors. Because most of the time, pitching, business pitching is done in front of investors. To do that, you have to be careful and pick what you say. Because what you want to understand when business pitching, it's an opportunity for any business founder or, or uh, pitcher to present their idea in front of investors. It's always a great opportunity. And you know one thing about investors and venture capitalists, they have very limited time because they look at a lot of companies, maybe thousands in the, in the span of a very short period. And they want to hear what they want to hear. If they don't hear what they want to hear from you, they'll skip you, right? And not being able to communicate well your idea is not something that they will tolerate. And that's, that's a fact. So again, to do that, you have to be very careful and pick what you say. You have to be, number one, clear yet concise. Clear in the sense that you are understandable. There are certain ways on how to do this. Being clear is not, being, is not using too many jargons. Being clear is not being scientific in your explanations. Being clear is not using too many numbers and too many technical terms to get to your exact point. Being clear is being human in your messaging. Being clear is being able to explain what you want to say that even a 10-year-old can understand. Type 10-year-old if you got that. Again, if you want to be clear with what you're saying, here's the trick. Act like a 10-year-old. Then tell, tell yourself or tell, tell, tell yourself in the mirror what you just want to pitch. Think, think of yourself as a 10-year-old. And if you did not understand that, probably you are not that clear. Or explain it to a 10-year-old. Go find a 10-year-old. Explain your idea. Try to pitch it to them. If they didn't understand it, then maybe you're still too complex. Right? Because again, these investors have very, very limited time. You are just one of those companies that they look into. Who are you? So what you have to do is to establish your earn, earn the, your, your right to be listened to. Earn that right. And that is through clear and concise messaging. right? Because a clear idea, the first way to do it is that if you are able to explain your pitch or tell it to someone else, it can be uh, spread by word of, word of mouth. Anyone heard of word of mouth? Raise your hand, word of mouth. What do I mean? Now, what do I mean? The best companies around the world grow organically, right? Because they have a clear messaging. Because of their clear messaging, they are able to grow <clears throat> organically because that is the foundation for growth and how do you be clear right being clear again is if your idea can spread through word of mouth if you are clear and if a 10 year old can understand it that 10 year old can spread the word right it becomes reproducible it could it becomes something that if you tell it to someone else, that other person can tell it the same way to another and another and another and another and it grows like wildfire. It's like setting off fireworks for your business. Right? It's when you get so pumped talking about this company. Hey, did you hear about this company? They're doing this, this, this and that. Oh, I heard my friend said this, this and that about that, their product then everyone's ears perk up and they cannot wait to share the excitement 
with even more hopes. It's like a wildfire of enthusiasm spreading your business buzz far and wide. A, a small tip on how you can do it. When you are pitching, remember, talk about it enthusiastically. Be clear, be concise, so that it spreads on its own. One thing to consider is to be clear, okay? clear and concise. One thing to consider is using the proper words, avoiding jargons that only experts or maybe people in your industry would understand. Because take note, these investors are people. Most of them, if not all of them, might not even be experts in your field. They just want to know where they could invest and get, get their, their money back or maybe gain massive returns. How do you do that? Use terms that even a 10, again, or 12-year-old would understand. Here's an example. A year ago, we had a new incubate, a startup incubate, and they developed this uh, technology. And this is how they presented it first. So an Android app application utilizing smartphone cameras for crop disease diagnosis, offering real-time scanning. It swiftly displays crop conditions and recommends optimal solutions. Its user-friendly interface ensures easy navigation for efficient problem solving in agriculture. Now, I want you to type in the chat box if this is clear and concise. Type clear if you think this is clear and concise. Anyone else? All right, thank you, thank you. Actually, it isn't. Now, I want, you, I want you to take a good look about what's on the screen. Now, this is how they explain it. A super smart app for crop growers. It uses your phone camera to figure out if crops are sick and tells you how to help them get better all in a really easy phone app. Now, which one is better? Which one do you think would resonate more? The first one or the second? Right, this is very important. Again, use terms that even a 10 or 12 year old would understand, right? Make the idea understandable to everyone in the room, not just for a select few. And even understandable to people who don't even know about your business. This is very important because you will talk about your company above everything else. If in the future you put up your own company, this is what you will do, especially as a CEO, as a CTO, as a founder. You will talk about your company, your product above anything else. You talk about your company to gain founders, co-founders. You will talk about your company, your product, to get users, customers. Again, you will talk about your company and your product to gain investors, even employees, and even shareholders. If you want to be a big company, you pitch your product, you pitch your company every time. And you really have to be good at this, to do it quickly, and efficiently, right? That's why it's very important. Pitching is very important because at the end of the day, you'll do it every time, right? So things to avoid. Don't use ambiguous words, statements, and terms that could mean two or more different things, you know, something that could uh, lead the listener or the audience to think about two different possible scenarios about what you're talking about. Don't use abstracts, things like significant or remarkable, groundbreaking. Measure it. There's no clear-cut definition of these terms or statements. My appreciation to the abstract term that you use could be different from how you understand it. Extraordinary. 
What could that mean? Could mean anything, right? Avoid complex ideas that are intertwined. Do not mix too much things in your description and explanation where you get to <laughs> grab different factors from everywhere and try to link it together, try to create a very complex picture that would just make your audience confused about what you are trying to say. Avoid mystery, right? And things like ignorable words. What are those? Complex metrics, industry-specific terminology, acronyms that are cliche, or no one really understands, right? Buzzwords, those are ignorable, ignorable words. Uh, we created a disruptive or an innovative. We use synergy. Come on. Nope. Everybody says that. And you don't want your investors to look at you as someone who says something that they've already heard. So, a great pitch is something, if you, this is how to test your clearness or clarity rather, and being concise, to test your, your pitch of being clear, right? It should be in such a way that if you tell your mom about it, this is a fun activity, you know? If uh, some of you would be having a pitching activity soon or a competition or a demo or whatever, try this, try this. Pitch your idea to your mom. If she gets it, and she'll be like, oh, that's good. That's something maybe that I will use. Oh, I know someone who can use that. Oh, I know someone who will do that, right? That is a good sign. That is a good sign. That's a very good sign, right? Instead of after you pitch your, 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 your business idea to your mom, she'll be like, what have you been doing with your life? Go study, go to your room. <laughs> if you get that feedback, then maybe you have to improve your pitch more. Because <laughs> you know why? Again, I'll mention it again. A good pitch is good for word of mouth, right? Because this is how we speak. This is how you and I speak to each other. We talk in normal conversational terms. We use normal conversational terms to relate to each other. We don't always talk like MBAs. We don't always talk like CEOs, CFOs, CTOs all the time. Again, messaging, be clear. So next is you want to be concise. Concise means brief. Okay, Type concise if you got that. In the chat box, please. Anyone? Thank you, Dia, Anissa. All right. So, how to be concise? Avoid preambles. Avoid preambles. Preambles are a kind of statements, long phrases, paragraphs that you put before the main topic or the main point of discussion or whatnot. Avoid them, okay? No dilly-dallying. Go straight to the point. Because again, your investors, your customers have limited time. And it might be the only time that you have the opportunity to talk to them, to pitch to them your idea. So you want to make the most out of it. Again, you have to be reproducible. Avoiding preambles, you have to be reproducible. How is it reproducible? Okay, here's the trick. I, wanted, I want you to... Uh, understand this very, very well, right? Listen. Reproducible means when you are trying to pitch, okay, you must be able to help your audience 
create a picture in their mind. Interesting, isn't it? For example, remember other books or novels where they use kind they kind of use some words that helps you create a picture of what is happening within the story. Anyone who reads a lot of books or novels, raise your hand. Type in the chat box what book you read. <laughs> Let's see what book you read. Or give me an example of a book you, you have read. The Art of War. Sun Tzu. Interesting. Mm, do you apply the teachings? <laughs> All right, what about the others? I saw a lot of hands earlier. Which books did you read? Type the title in the chat box. If possible. Power. All right. Atomic Habit by James Clear. All right. Who else can... Oh, by the way, we have a question there. Can we park that for later? Thank you. There is emotion by design, foreign policy. Okay, all right, all right, thank you. So when I mentioned books earlier, I, I was mentioning about novels, no? like Harry Potter, things like that, uh, Lord of the Rings, because, or maybe The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. If you try to look into how these authors write certain scenarios, it helps it helps their audience, their readers, with just words, with just words, to create a vivid pictures in their minds of what is happening in that story. That creates a reproducible idea. Okay. Moving forward, we want to help them understand and create a picture of what you are making, what is the problem, and who is the customer. We want to help them create a picture around that. Example, we are going to harmonize ecological vitality with digital augmentation, fostering symbiotic connectivity between natural matrices and information conduits for holistic optimization. Is it a good or a bad statement? Type good if it's good, type bad if it's bad. Right, Rexa says it's bad. Bad. Are you sure? What about the others? Hard to absorb, right? <laughs> right. It's hard to absorb, right? Because it's not concise. It uses a lot of jargons. It uses a lot of abstraction and whatnot. It, 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 it's really bad. All the nouns you see there are abs abstract. Cannot reproduce it. Even if you're able to explain it in a different way or form to another person, I'm sure there's a high probability that when you ask that person, hey, what, what, what is that company about? Uh, it's just about a bunch of stuff about digital augment. That's all I remember. <laughs> That's what they tell about it. Right? So there's no informational value. I still have to ask, hey, here's the thing. Reading this, you still have to ask maybe around three, four, five questions to get to what this really wants to say. Next. Here. This is a basic example of a preamble in an ever evolving landscape of boundless innovation and dynamic paradigms. People don't want to hear this. Right? It's like when you start talking about the story of the company, they don't want to hear that. Investors want to hear how much they will have to invest. What are you doing? Do you have a problem worth solving? 
if I help you, what is the growth? How, how long or how soon can I gain my money back? How much can I earn from this after I, I break even? How are you going to do it? That's what they want to hear. Ever heard of the meme? In the beninging, in the beninging. <laughs> People don't want to hear that. Right? So let's move on. Being concise is also being descriptive, right? You want to understand what, you want your audience to understand, your investors to understand what you are building, right? As an investor, I want to have a sense of what they are making. Then, what do I want? What do I want to achieve? I want to achieve a level of excitement from what I am seeing, hearing, from the pitch presenter. Next question I ask is, can I work with this before? Basic example is here. Airbnb is the first online marketplace that lets travelers book rooms with locals instead of hotels. Plain and simple, yet you understand it. It's reproducible. It is something that if you tell it to someone else, they can easily pick it up and tell it to somebody else. It's descriptive because you're able to create a picture in your mind about what's happening. You can from from just this statement alone, you can you can envision someone arriving at the airport, talking to a local, booking a room. <laughs> right? A pitch must be refreshing, but no pretense. Right. For example, Dropbox synchronizes files across your or your team's computers. Talks about what it does. Plain and simple. Other companies tend to give up clarity to make themselves look bigger and extravagant. You know. However, by doing so, it makes the audience more distant because of the communication gap and the complexity, mm -hmm. right? which makes this kind of statement better than everybody else. Another example, Vahan. Vahan is building LinkedIn for the next billion internet users. So what's the problem here? LinkedIn has a limited uh, storage space and limited things to do about it, right? But everybody knows LinkedIn. Nobody knows about Vahan. How do you bridge that gap? Because everybody knows about LinkedIn. You did not need to explain what you're building. Just mention that it is the LinkedIn for the next billion internet users. Since everybody knows LinkedIn, they kind of know and have a feeling or have an idea of what Vahan is building already without explaining. Right? That's another way to do it. Especially if you're talking about uh, relating your pitch to big brands like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Tesla, and things like that. It doesn't really perfectly connect me to what they're building no, in this statement, but I'm intrigued. And it makes me excited about someone building in a LinkedIn or building a LinkedIn. I know it's some kind of a social network for business people because that's what LinkedIn is. And so I'm curious about how, how are they gonna do it? Now it gets me on the right track on the questions to ask myself later as an investor. How do I then evaluate if this is working or promising or not? Then as an investor, I will ask myself, is this the right team? Can they pull it off? Or maybe ask myself, do they have enough or a certain amount of traction, etc.? So being concise tells a lot of things. It gives the investor, uh, what do you call this? A secondary information about you 
as a team as well. It lets the investor know that you have thought deeply about your idea. Why? Because you have thought deeply about your idea. You practiced it so much, so much that you really got good at getting people excited about your idea and understand your thing really quickly. So when you pitch, you have to pass also that emotion to your audience. And you were, you were able to figure it out to do it in a short amount of time. Then the investors would tell themselves, oh, this is a founder that has thought deeply about the idea. Because he was able to bring it to the simplest terms and explain it as efficiently and as briefly as possible. Right? with the words that he chose, with the thoughts and actions that he, he did. They understand what is important about what they do with their company. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> However, you are too concise if your audience or your investors are not able to see or envision what you are making, what the problem is. Or who is the customer? If these questions are asked after you pitch, because most of the time there are sessions or pitching sessions where the investors have uh, enough time to ask questions to the pitch presenters, maybe the founders or whatnot, on whatever case it may be. If they ask about, so what are you making? So what is the problem you're trying to solve? So who is your target customers? If they ask those questions, you did a very bad pitch. Because these things should have straight away been sent into their heads, created a picture in their heads already as soon as you ended the pitch. So what is it in a business idea or a startup idea in that case? What we really want to pitch when we are pitching a business idea is we want to present the problem, the solution, and the insight. The insight is just the so what. So what if that's the problem? So what if that's your solution? A problem includes uh, your customers as well. There has to be a problem, customer, or problem, solution, fit. Your solution must be able to answer the problem. There also should be a solution market fit which means your solution must be something that is acceptable to your customers. And then the insights. So let's move on. When you talk about the problem, you want to express the problem. Okay? You want to express a problem that is growing. Right? In the Philippines, the continuous demand of e-commerce has been uh, more than 10% per year since 2022 creating a problem of inadequate and uncompet in uncompetitive services in point-to-point in -point deliveries. So it's a growing, it grows every year. You're showing growth of the problem. It means the problem is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every time. It's getting worse, right? Urgent, right? Millions of tons or Millions of tons of oil spilled in the uh, what do you call this in the West Philippine Sea, rendering fish kill of our, of an estimated five billion pesos worth of fish and food. So it's something that's urgent, a problem that needs to be solved right away. Otherwise, something big might happen. The problem must be expensive. Or at least could be something expensive or mandatory or frequent, something that happens every time. Did you know that on a daily basis, uh, commuters in the Philippines spend 40 to 40 minutes to one minute and one hour and 30 minutes a day just waiting for a ride every day? So it's a frequent problem. 
then when you explain a, or when you think about the, the solution, right, it should not be solution comes first, then problem second. It should always be the problem comes first, then the solution comes second. There are times, though, that a solution in search of a problem works sometimes, but most of the time, it doesn't. So first, you want your audience to understand okay, that the problem exists, that the problem is real, that people experience that problem, and that these people want to solve that problem. Okay? Mac Atram once said, a customer <clears throat> is someone, pick this up, Mac Atram once said, a customer is someone with a problem they do not want and a solution they do not have. Interesting, isn't it? I'll type it in the chat box. So when pitching, you want your audience to understand, create a picture in their minds that, yes, this problem really exists. I know someone, I myself, I'm experiencing that problem. Then you use measurements on to, to, to scale, to help them in their mind scale the, 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 the problem or how big the problem is. Right? So, let's move forward. In pitching your business, you have to package your idea. You don't need to do all the work. That's why you have to be just clear and concise. You don't need to lay down everything in detail. I think this could answer one of the questions earlier. A good investor will do that on their own. What do I mean? Again, in pitching your business, you don't need to do all the work. You don't need to lay down all the cards, everything in detail. Don't have to do it that way. A good investor will do that on their own. They will hear what you talk about and extrapolate. Build onto your idea. If the audience is not like that, then perhaps they're not the right people to get investment from. <laughs> right? So how do you package up your idea and present them to an investor so that they can make a decision in your favor? First, they look at what you say, how you speak, what's on your presentation, and how you look. Everything about the typeface, the font that you use, the color schemes that you use, the background, the videos, the images. It will create a big picture of what you intend to communicate. Right? I want to tell you a story about this company in the Philippines before, long ago. They had this big, big banner ad in one of the biggest highways in Metro Manila. It's, it's, it's quite huge, uh, several feet in length and width. So it's, it's, it's really big, right? A billboard. For some reason, after that company had that billboard put up there for about three months, their sales went spiral, went down. As in down. Nobody understood why. Usually when you create, conduct advertising or ad, ad marketing efforts like that, having your company in a, one of the biggest billboards available, right? It should boost growth, right? You know what they discovered? They discovered that they used the font, the font, the text font. Imagine this. They used the text font, the same font that the electric companies use in sending out disconnection notices. 
So the electricity providers use this certain font in disconnection notices. Your electricity will soon be cut off. Things like that, right? You have to pay this, this, and that. They use that font in their bills. And accidentally, this company used that same font on their billboard to advertise their company. Well, what, the back of the people's mind? It was pissing them off. They don't want to see it, but they don't know why. They get irritated by the, the ad, but they don't know why. Because they associated that font to receiving bad news. So everything in your presentation, everything should be in sync. Ever heard of the saying? Who heard about this already? Facts tell, stories sell. Say fact, tell facts or type facts in the chat box if you've heard of this saying. Facts tell, stories sell. Right, heard about it. Right, perfect. So how do you do this? To apply this facts tell and story sell, you want to sell an experience. Why is it that stories are so meaningful? Why? Because stories are? Type in the chat box what you think. The first, enter, enters, the first word that enters into your mind. Stories are? This is the premise. Facts tell, stories sell. Why? Is it that stories are meaningful? Because stories are blank. What do you think? Normally relatable, attractive, right? Mind create things, all right? Stories how our brain or mind create things. What else? How about the others? Because stories are history, value, right? Normally a reality. Okay, thank you, thank you. You know what? Oh. Sorry, I spilled my water. <laughs> anyway, fluid, all right, based on someone's experience. That's very close, right? Because stories are actually memorable. Did you know, on a daily basis, we are bombarded every day by information, data, TV, billboard, YouTube, TikTok. Mm. Right? And at the end of the day, you're only going to remember very few of that. All the things you hear during the day, you will only retain some of it and imagine for these investors you're just part of that noise until you are not who recognizes this picture type in the chat box which movie does this come from oh 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 inside out right right don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's from inside out. So what do you call this place? What do you call this place? Core memory. Mm -hmm. Right, core memory. So what happens? Yeah, memory island. All right. So it's actually part of the link between the core memories and the memory dump. Okay. Because of all the data and statistics that we get bombarded with every day, the truth is we will only remember 5% of the information. You believe that? And this is according to research. Like in Inside Out, remember how all the memories go to the memory dump, right? Most of the memories, not all. <laughs> but 
the certain memories that stick with you, even for Riley in Inside Out, are the memories wrapped around an event, wrapped around a moment, a story, an experience. When you can wrap your data and statistics, the science behind it, the technicals around that experience, you humanize it. And people will remember it. Facts tell, stories tell. I'm not just talking about the written story. I'm also talking about the visual story. Because remember, it's a package. Because that's really how we communicate today. And if you do so, when you're storytelling to communicate information, you make your chances go up to 22 times higher. Now, the information you share 10 minutes later, people are going to remember it 65% of the time. Simply because you told a story. So, when pitching, the goal is to get your customer or investor from a point of view, listen to this, where your product does not even exist. From a point where your product does not even exist to a place or state where your product service is a must-to-have, must-to-use, must-own. Basically, what you're trying to do is to get them become part of your journey whether as a customer or an investor. Now in a journey, of course, there are things you need to establish. The starting point, the destination, the path, and the person, the story. How are you gonna do that? Here's some certain uh, touch points when you pitch. Start with an opening statement, a mem memorable on-sentence explanation of what you do for your customers. Like for example, hi, I, hi everyone. I'm Nico Tuban, and I'm going to talk about how we can uh, reduce plastic, the use of plastics in the next ten to fifteen years. Also, give a brief background of what is your ask, right? At the end of this pitch, I'll be giving you an opportunity to participate in this most promising startup. Notice that. Notice that. At the very start, you give them an idea of what is the ask. What are you asking? Then you talk about why you. Why do you care about solving this problem for the customers? How is the customer's life affect, affected by this industry? Or how is your life affected by this industry? Growing up, I lived in a suburban area where plastic is um, a, a great, a big problem for us. Contaminating water sources, food, etc. Why should your audience have the confidence in you? You have to earn the right. Okay? Then you talk about the pain and the gain. You humanize the problem. And the competition. What are the available solutions out there? Who are operating in the space? The product. As simply as possible, you have, have you tested it with customers? What can your customers do as a result of your product? Because of this product, they can do this, 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 and that. What's unique about your product? Do you already have traction? How many people will be interested with the idea that uh, what are your successes so far? Do you have pilot customers? Which major brand partners do you have? Use data to strengthen your case. Then you add the product demo. You present your business model. How do you get paid? What is the opportunity for growth? How can you scale beyond your current scope? Then the financial mock-up, especially. Explain what you need to succeed. How much money do you need, right? How much resources do you need? What kind of partnership, partnerships do you look for? Then how would your financial statements look after when you get what you need? What are projections moving forward? Then you talk about the team. Why are you the right people to do it? Investment. Have you invested money into it? Have you raised money so far? How much are you looking for now? What bigger 
what big next steps will you use the investment for? Is it to scale up the operations? It is, is it to hire marketing staff because of the consistent increasing demand that you cannot can no longer handle? What milestones will you reach with the money? If you, if you get the money, how much growth in sales will you get in the following years? What type, in, what, what type of investors are you looking for, right? Are you looking for investors who are just there to back you up with the money? Are you looking for investors who could share their network with you? Are you looking for investors who have these kinds of expertise in, in maybe marketing, maybe tech, or in maybe or, or whatnot, whatever aspect around your business? And then the call to action, the pitch, a clear request for the audience to take action. Tell them what is their next step or their next first step. All you have to do, for example, all you have to do is to invest one million and so on and so forth. We'll meet you after this pitch. We'll meet you at the back. Then end with a high note. Close with a reminder about what your business aims to offer and end with great energy. Always remember that. End with great energy. Mm, uh, pardon, Mr. Ian? Uh, Mr. Nico, pardon? There is a question that we received for the session just now. Yeah. It's, uh, okay, yeah. it's from Miss uh, Fauzani Kalida. Thank you for asking the question, Miss Fauzani. Uh, her question is this like, uh, dear Mr. Ian, which one is more important in a business pitch? The technical knowledge of the topic or the simplicity in delivering the pitch? Thank you. Right. So I, I think I answered that earlier. What's more important mm, okay. is her ability to communicate your message in the most understandable way as possible. Like I mentioned, if you can explain your idea in a manner that even a 10-year-old would understand, that would be better. Because you know what? The technicals, the specifics, the details onto that, they, you'll not even get to that point of conversation if they don't see that your idea, your solution, your technology, your startup, your business is worth getting into. Mm, so you have to okay. answer the, the thing first that is your problem something real? Do people experience it? What is the evidence that people are experiencing it? How big is that? Mm. You have to answer those first. Okay. Um. If I may, may I uh, start to ask question to you too, Mr. Nico, because I kind of interested in this topic today. Sure. <laughs> well, maybe uh, allow yes. me to finish. I'm on my last slide actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, please do. Uh, right. So going back, thank you, Marza. Now I want to ask you, what is your story? How will you help customers and invest in investors visualize how to get from point A to point B? How do you get them to the internal transformation okay, from someone who doesn't know anything about you to now being an advocate of your business idea? So once again, thank you very much, everyone. And I hope this has been uh, quite a learning session for you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's a really interesting topic that we just listened in, listening about. And I guess that inspire us students here to ask some questions to Mr. Nico, maybe. If there anyone that want to ask question, you can just, you know, chat in the chat box. And then like, uh, I will start to mentioning uh, them like one by one that is related. Okay, you can raise your hand. And for now we have this uh, Mr. Andromeda. Hello. Hello, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Reiko. I'm Andrew, a BNU student. Uh, before that, I would like to say thank you about your presentation that gave me new insight about the pitching idea. Uh, I would like to ask about the, how can we replicate the engaging and influential atmosphere of offline business pitching in our online presentation? Offline, we are master of the states, deeply connected with our subject matter and able to captivate our audience. However, 
online presentation often feel monotones, uh, resembling a teacher delivering lecture notes to disengaged students. That's from me. Yeah, mm. thank you. Right. So correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I believe you're asking me about how to make it engaging, like similar to what your setup is in in school, right? In your subjects, like the monotonous tone of the teachers in explaining. Uh, I mean, like a business pitching, business pitching in online, uh, online, right. like 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 uh, engaging, like uh, offline. Right. For for me, if you were to ask me. There's a big difference because you lack the eye contact with your audience when you're doing online, right? But one way to do that, to overcome that, when you're pitching online in an online setting like this, for example, you engage your audience by asking questions, making them think and making them respond to your questions. You remember how I, I, I often ask you about certain things with what I talk about, then I don't continue until I get a response. That ensures uh, that ensures that I have someone that I'm talking to. Or it, it, you kind of make it like a conversation. Right? So that's one tip that I could give for you when presenting or pitching in an online platform like this. Because that's the only way we can uh, interact with our audience, right? Uh, okay. Is there anyone else that need to uh, was it, ask the questions? You can raise your hands. Okay, then I guess uh, meanwhile our students are preparing their question for you, Mr. Nico. Uh, okay, we got we got one. Uh, Miss Calendula Garnet Sylvia, can you open? Please uh, open your video or your cam. Hello, good afternoon. Good Thank afternoon, you. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You can start, uh, you can start uh, asking the question to Mr. Nico. Thank you for this thank opportunity you. and thank you for the speaker for like such inspiring um, informations and also like based on my experience, maybe based on your experiences. And um, I would like to have I would like to raise some questions. First of all, uh, since I'm a student and uh, I would love to hear like from your perspective, which one we should be prioritized first in business, pitching in business process as a startup or like business leaders. Uh, we have to have like the great, the great business pitching first for preparation or we have to have the um, good business model or plan so, so that we can, you know, like ensure everything would be linked as based what we have to expect it. And um, mm -hmm. that's my first question. Thank you. My second question is like based on your experiences, um, could you tell us a little bit how you were like delivered your business pitching from the first place? Yeah, thank you. That's all my questions. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch the second question. Could you repeat Yes, that? yes. I mean, um, I do believe if you have like a little experience or like uh, on how you, before you build your company, I do believe if I, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, um, so you must have had experience to deliver the pitching before. And like um, what sort of, Peach, could you tell us or like give us a little bit of ex uh, experience based on experience on how um, you were like delivered the pitch to the investors or even the customers? Right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you for that, Calendula. So for the first question, uh, I'd love to answer that. Whether which one to uh, prioritize first, right? The business model or the business pitch? Of course. The business pitch would not be there if you have not yet created or validated your business model. So a quick answer to that is the business model should come first. Otherwise, your pitch will have not enough, what do you call this? Not enough bearing or not enough substance, if you 
if that makes sense. Because prior to, when creating an idea, we usually uh, do canvases, different canvases, to give us a clear picture of what we really want to do, like systemic canvases, business model canvases, or whatnot. In order for us to create a picture of how our pitch, or uh, how we want to make our pitch look like. If, if you get what I'm saying. There are certain uh, sequences of pitches that could be applied. There's no straight path to that. There's no specific uh, way to start your pitch. Some start at, from the end, some start with the beginning, some start with the problem, some start by explaining the customers. Some even jump to the gun by uh, sharing their solutions right, right off the bat. It's just a matter of for me, it's just a matter of, number one, this could also answer your second question. No? It's about knowing who you're pitching to. It. It, it would be a great advantage for you as a founder or maybe a startup when pitching to actually have a prior information of who the audience are. Like if you have investors there, try to research, try to ask around, who will be present? Oh, is it uh, a venture capitalist? What's their company? Who leads them? Who will be the representative? With with that information, it will give you uh, what they call this more like an understanding on how to attack the pitch in a manner that would suit that kind of person, that kind of audience. Otherwise, you might be throwing stories, you might be throwing information that kind of takes them the wrong way. Simply because you did not try to know whom you will be pitching to. Even if you had a great pitch, then if you, one word actually can, can just one word can, can take off an investor the wrong way. And for the question of having little experience, well, that's the beauty of it. You just have to keep practicing. The more you pitch, the more you get better. And it's the only way. <laughs> there's, no, there's no shortcut to that. So try it with your mom, try it with your <laughs> siblings, with your family and friends. If you can't do it with them, what more? How, how could you do it in front of investors? Okay, I hope that answering Miss um, Calendula's questions. Is it clear enough? Okay, thank you. And is there anyone else that want to ask questions? We can uh, receive like one or two more questions. You can like start raise your hands if you want. Okay, if there's uh, no one that uh, try to ask the question, I will ask my question. <laughs> okay, I, I guess, um, okay, enough, yeah, okay. Uh, sir, may I ask you the question, Mr. Nico? Yeah, okay. It's like this, uh, imagine that an investor or client is too busy to listen to our pitch and they want us to send them email or hand out our like one pager or business brochures. Like how to make like our one pager or business brochure like easy to digest format. So, you know, they can just understood what is what. Thank you. Right. So it depends on the scenario. You want to know first whether or not, here's the thing. Uh, I'll focus, this is a big, that's a very good question actually. And it's, it's, it's a question usually asked around. But the thing is, you want to go back to providing value for your investors. So how do you get that? You want to make sure first whether or not they want a message or they are expecting a message or they are expecting an email. Questions like, how do you want me to reach you? Would, we, would you be open to me sending out a briefer of what we are doing? Ask that question. Ask those questions. If you don't and you just 
blindly send out the information, the one pager or brochure or whatnot, it lacks value because your investor, that person did not ask for it. Does that make sense? But if in case they sent you, right, they sent you that, they, they told you that they want to receive that one liner, that one pager, that brochure that you mean to send because that's what you have and that's the only thing that you could send given the amount of time available. Then my tip on that is uh, be visual, go straight to the point. What are the key information that that kind of investor would really want to see? It varies. You know, so no, try to understand or research about that kind of investor, whether or not they're the type of advocate to invest on a cause for the environment, things like that. Are they, are they profit driven? Are they more interested in the technological advancement of what you could bring to the table? If that makes sense. Try to understand what kind of person he or she is. Then from there, that's how you shape that one pager brochure that you would send to them. Because you target what they, again, value. Mm -hmm. Value. Okay. I, I, think, I think that's clear. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question, uh, Mr. Nicol. Okay. Uh, I guess like uh, now that like we almost... Uh, reach the end of our discussion today uh, again like if there is uh, no one asking the question I'm going to start it all like um, mentioning like the summary today and then like um, because you know like it's time flies so fast that we almost arrive at the end of our today's discussions which is a business pitching today's topic is really useful for our students in order to prepare us to present our ideas and to make effective uh, business pitch to our future clients or investors. Because um, I, I think that, uh, you know, like uh, we are here as a students, we joined this uh, session, like bold discussion today. It's because like there is something inside us that we want to create, or maybe we just have this kind of, you know, entrepreneurship uh, spirit. And then like, this, uh, the things that we learn from Mr. Nico is really, really useful for us. So we can uh, apply that in the futures. And I hope, you know, all of us can be excellent. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the lesson today, Mr. Nichols. And, uh, and then like, before we end the discussion, I would say thank you very much for Mr. Nico for joining and supporting us Venus University students. It is truly a great honor to be able to learn such precious knowledge. We have uh, Mr. Nico will join. I hope like Mr. Nico will join us again for another interesting business webinar in the future. And do you have something to say to the audience? Before like, yeah, we close the, our sessions. Uh, uh, nothing really, but I'm, I've always been an advocate of the idea that as a student, your legacy is your research. Right? It's the only thing you leave behind in the university. So make the most out of it. Get serious when you get to that level. And if, you're, have an, if you have an idea, and you can implement, implement it in your research, then why not create something that is, that is really worth creating or research on something that is really worth spending your time with? Then maybe, maybe, just a puncher's chance. Mm -hmm. You can create something out of it and create a business or a startup out of it that would serve my life. Mm. That's that's really nice. That's really nice. Uh, me personally, I learned a lot from, from this uh, session today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nico, for joining us. And thank you for everyone that helping this discussion to happen and for the audience and student who join us today see you next discussion and have a good day and also for the exit ticket you can just start uh, looking from the chat there will be like our host will provide the link okay Okay, 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 okay. Now, like, uh, there are, like, uh, students also saying, like, thanks and appreciate for the explanation 
about the business pitching to topic today. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. And especially thank you to Sir Nico for the great presentation today. And before we finally close the session today, I would like to ask you all to open your camera if you can uh, for the photo session with our speaker and moderator today. Okay, so I already see that there are some of you who already turn on your camera and please do not turn off the camera until the end of the session because we don't know in on which slide we are. And now I'm going to start the photo session. Okay, ready? Okay, three, two, one, smile. Okay, now the second slide. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, great. And the third slide. And the final slide. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, I would like to thank Sir Nico and Miss Marcella for the great session and great, very eye-opening insight today. And I would like to remind you to fill the exit ticket link and please make sure that your data is right with no typos so you can uh, receive your e-certificate and I would like to also remind you to don't forget to follow us on social media and to visit our website online.binus.ac.id and also please don't forget to follow our whatsapp channel uh, at Binus University Online. So, so I, Teddy, as today's MC, would like to apologize for any mistakes. See you on the next bowl session series. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you, Sir Nico, Miss Marcella. Thank you, yeah, Sir bro. Nico and Thank you, thank you. Melangkah menuju kelas dunia Berjuang bersama untuk masa depan Tak pernah berhenti berinovasi Berikan pendidikan yang terbaik We are, we are, we are, we are, we are Binusian We are, we are, we are, we are, we are Binusian We are, we are, we are, we are, we are Binusian Berjuang Hidup yang semakin mantap Mendidik, memberdayakan, membangun Nusantara Berbekal teknologi masa kini Pelayanan yang wow itu pasti For the best institution, let's try it.